Welcome to tips video for Wasteland 3, you lost bastards. Let's get started with some tips that will help you in your adventure through frozen wastes. For lots of hours I didn't really know how to check status effects on enemies, which can be very problematic as there were no descriptions in help section explaining what some statuses like demoralized, frozen and shocked meant. Well, I was blind, because there is easy to miss information button at top right that gives every detail you need to know about enemies and status effects plaguing them. Are you using flamethrower or shotgun but keep hitting your own teammates? Hold control button on PC or corresponding button on consoles to manually aim cone shaped attacks. This is important to know so you don't start killing your own teammates. Now that we are talking about weapons, here is best tip to conserve ammo so you don't go broke spending money on ammo left and right. Using this simple method I almost never had to buy ammo in first 15 to 20 hours on ranger difficulty. There are four major weapon categories, big guns, small guns, sniper rifles and automatic weapons. All these categories have subcategories. Example being revolvers, semi-automatic pistols and shotguns under small arms, assault rifles and submachine guns under automatic weapons, etc. Point being that all of these use different types of ammunition. If you watch closely here, these two handguns use different ammo. These two automatic rifles also use different ammo. Best way to conserve ammo is to diversify weapon distribution as much as possible by having all four major weapon groups represented in your team. If you have one category, let's say small arms, as primary focus on multiple party members, then don't give everyone revolvers, as that will spend that specific ammo too fast. Instead, you can give one person's semi-automatic pistol, to second person goes shotgun and to third person goes revolver. Now you won't have to worry about small arms ammunition at all. Same principle applies to other categories as well. Same goes for skills as well. Diversify skills across party members. Having four party members being mediocre at lots of things makes no sense in this game as you will lose a lot. Specialize. You don't need single party member that is fantastic with more than one major weapon group. You can do it, but it is better to specialize into something else, non-combat based as well. Prioritize 3 or 4 skills with every party member and you are going to have better results going forward. At the beginning, non-rangers will join your group, named Quan and Lucia. Lucia is decent at weapon modding and Quan is decent at kisses. For the time being you don't have to waste points on these skills when you have them in your party. Later on you can quickly put points after one or two level ups in kisses or weapon modding if they leave the party. Also survival skill is not very useful during early game, so you can hold off until that becomes more important later on. Having at least two party members with one or two points into first aid would be a good idea. Reason behind this is that there are two main healing items in the game, Med Hypo and Med Pack. Med Hypo can be only used on self, but costs twice as much. Med Pack can only be used on allies, but it is half a price and its effectiveness can reach Med Hypo effectiveness with couple of points into first aid. Another reason is that Med Packs are far more frequent than Med Hypos, at least they are in my playthrough. Skill books are fantastic one-time use items that increase skills, but are quite rare. 
I would advise saving them for later when you want to get last couple of ranks for highly leveled skill already as those are biggest pain to acquire because points required for each skill rank grow. While first rank costs only 1 point to upgrade, last rank costs 6 points to level up, which is significantly harder to accumulate. One more character creation tip. Do not have any party member below 2 strength. 2 strength increases health gained per level by 3. If you have strength 1, you get no additional health per level. So if you had 2 characters at level 10, one has strength 1, another one has strength 2. First one would have 30 less health points than the second one, just because of that one strength difference. 30 health points is meaningful amount in this game, so I would advise don't go below 2 strength. Having one sneaky character can be of great use. It gives great advantages at the start of combat. For example, if that sneaky character is proficient with mechanics, you can turn off generators that would power down turrets before the fight even starts. Another good idea is to have sniper with sneaky shit skill. Sneak attack from afar to start off combat with one enemy severely hurt or even dead can be of great advantage to your whole party. Overall, I would advise always playing safe, scouting a bit, as there is usually another way to approach the situation. Sometimes there isn't, but sometimes there is. So stay out of enemy perception range, sneak around first and look for additional things that could make your life easier in upcoming encounter. Using animals through Animal Whisperer, laying down turrets of your own, Throwing decoy grenades, etc. are all things that give you advantages by making some enemies wasting attack turns on expendables instead of you. Anyway, that would be it for this video. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for more Wasteland 3 content.